Joined in the studio by Dr. Hai Etan Cohen Yana Rochak. He's a Turkey expert at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. Uh, good to see you, Hai Etan. Good to see you too. Uh, so, uh, are these protests in Istanbul, are they spontaneous or has this been stirred up by Erdogan? No, I think it's very much organized. Uh, more than 300 non governmental organizations took part. And as you mentioned, uh, the most important one, the Tuguva, uh, is associated with the uh, son of the Turkish president. Uh, his name is Bilal Erdogan. So he also delivered a very, you know, emotional speech there. And uh, in my opinion, the choice of organizing this uh, demonstration uh, at this date, January the 1st, I think this is very uh, symbolic. In Turkey, uh, people are uh, celebrating the New Year's Eve. And according to the Turkish law, the January the 1st is considered as a public holiday. But the fact that that uh, all of the demonstrators, uh, they, uh, they've been to the mosque in the very early in the morning and right after the morning prayers, they got, uh, uh, they, they came to the streets and they, as you can see, they came to uh, the historic bridge of Galata. Uh, it is uh, basically a clear message that we are not from those who are getting drunk uh, in the New Year's Eve and in the very early oh, in the morning. Oh, secular religious development. Yes, definitely. It's a very clear message that for us, January the 1st is not a day of rest. We were not drunk on last night. Uh, we are putting the most important emphasis on Islam uh -huh. and uh, at the same time as you mentioned the Turkishness because since the same uh, demonstration was also uh, organized in the name of the Turkish martyrs uh, who fell uh, in the exchange of fires with the Tur with the Kurdish PKK. Uh, by the way this is another important issue uh, that uh, last week there was a similar uh, another uh, demonstration, a pro-Palestinian uh, demonstration, right after the uh, Kurdish uh, militants uh, killed the Turkish soldiers. And since then, demonstrators solely focused on the pro-Palestinian issue and they neglected uh, the death of the Turkish Why? soldiers, the secular, the secular uh, circles then criticized the pro-Palestinian protesters. Today, in order not to provide this kind of an excuse, so uh, the, the organizers of the demonstration, they named it, they tagged it as the demonstration for Palestine, slash also for the Turkish soldiers. This, this is something very symbolic. And the fact that all of the members of Erdogan's family. Uh, so he's trying to tie Turkish nationalism indeed, with the past. Uh, indeed. Uh, in my opinion, it's also a demonstration of power of Erdogan's family itself, because the most important speeches that were taken place there uh, was delivered by uh, Bilal Erdogan, the son of uh, the current president, and also his groom, um, Selçuk Bayraktar, the owner of the Baykar UAV uh, firm, which is uh, very important when we are speaking about uh, unmanned uh, air vehicles. Um, so uh, he is also considered as a very important potential successor of the uh, Turkish president. At the same time, this is a family rivalry. We are also seeing that uh, the style of speech uh, of uh, Bilal Erdogan is very, very similar to his father. He, I, I can all, I can tell you that he almost cloned his father in the way of, uh, of the uh, the style of the speech. No, we don't see him so much in the uh, yeah. Uh, outside. Yeah, but he is not as charismatic as his father. And, uh, Do you let, think he's being groomed to take over, perhaps? I don't think so. I, I think he, he lacks that charisma. Uh, I really think that the current uh, Turkish foreign minister, Hakan Fidan, uh, he has far more charisma uh, than Bilal Erdogan and also Seljuk Bayraktar, the groom, uh, is, uh, I think, more influential uh, in the uh, eyes of the Turkish people. So uh, it, we can see what, what's happening in terms of whipping up um, anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian sentiment. Um, of course, that's also happening with the Kurds because Turkey's been carrying out airstrikes on Iraq and Syria. Uh, they say they've killed militants. Kurdish groups say they've killed a lot of civilians uh, as well. Uh, is Erdogan trying to kind of get the focus away from that to a certain extent? Um, uh, it's something complicated. Uh, 
I think uh, since Erdogan's most important uh, partners are the Turkish nationalists, he may use this friction with the Kurdish PKK as an important, um, as an important, uh, you know, plus uh, in order to strengthen his uh, political relations uh, with the uh, Turkish uh, nationalists. Uh, but at the same time, uh, since we are marching towards uh, the municipal elections in Turkey, which will take place uh, this year. March 2024. Mm. So uh, all of these uh, course, frictions uh, with the with the Kurds and the pro Palestine. Lost, uh, yes, Istanbul, didn't definitely. And he needs and he needs uh, this victory, especially in Istanbul in in Ankara, uh, gravely. And the um, and of course the reason is not only to declare a victory, you know, a historic victory in these provinces, but when you are uh, winning. In Istanbul and in Ankara, it means that the Turkish Treasury will provide you necessary funds uh, to run these two provinces, and then uh, he can also fund the activities of his political party. This is very important, and that is why the Turkish nationalist card, which is, you know, the Kurdish issue, uh -huh. and at the same time the religious issue, the Israeli card, or the pro-Palestinian part, plays a very crucial role here. Kind of a perfect storm. Indeed, All indeed. Right. Dr. Hayatakoyan Yanovacek, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Major General